Hey guys, it's Hidden Purple, and I'm back again to talk even more about video games. So I was thinking I might get to Mass Effect Andromeda this week, but that turned out to be a pretty tall order. The more I played, the more I realized just how much I had to say on the game. The good, the bad, and everything in between. It's mostly bad. With all of the notes I'm taking on the game, I think Andromeda is going to wind up taking several videos to get through. One on the crew and the characters in the world, another on the art and music, yet another for the story and writing, which will include the abysmal dialogue, and I might even have to make more videos on top of all of that. I'm not really sure yet, I'm still trying to sort it all out, but as soon as I have it all sorted, I'll start uploading those videos. It's a bit of a slog though, so forgive me. For now, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the Mass Effect lore because I like the Mass Effect lore, and there's a lot to say on the subject. This week, I'll be talking about the ships and ship classes of the Mass Effect universe, by request from one of my regular viewers. So, first things first, let's talk about what makes a Mass Effect ship run. So in the Mass Effect universe, you have ship drives called Mass Effect drives that allow for faster than light travel. These drives make use of a fictional element called Element Zero. The long and short of it is that Element Zero interacts with matter in such a way that it can reduce its mass to the point where normal laws of physics don't apply to the objects within the Mass Effect field. The reason that objects normally can't travel faster than light is explained by Albert Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc squared, which translates to energy equals mass times acceleration. What this tells us is that an object with mass would require infinite energy to reach the speed of light and beyond. It's this that keeps us from moving through space at faster than light speeds. So, to circumvent this problem, Mass Effect fields reduce the ships and their passengers' mass to that of elementary particles, allowing for faster than light travel with very little energy expenditure. Mass Effect drives don't actually produce any thrust though, so a traditional thrust engine is also required to make a Mass Effect ship move forward. These come in all sorts of flavors. Chemical rockets are pretty common even in this advanced future, but they also use engines that sound a lot more sci-fi. Many of the ships use ion engines, just like the TIE fighters from Star Wars. Most military ships use what's called an anti-proton drive, which is a theoretical engine that would fire protons and anti-protons at one another. When these matter and antimatter particles collide, they annihilate one another, creating energy which is then funneled out the back of the ship, producing thrust. The Codex also says that if a Mass Effect field were to collapse during faster than light travel, it would prove fatal for the entire crew. The reason that the Codex offers is that the sudden collapse of the Mass Effect field would cause a massive release of what's called Cherenkov radiation. Must be pretty nasty with a name like that, am I right? Well, not really. Cherenkov radiation is just the result of particles in a nuclear reaction traveling faster than the speed of light inside of water. It creates what is effectively the light speed equivalent of a sonic boom. There's not really a cool sounding name for it, like sonic boom, so they just call it Cherenkov radiation, which it turns out is pretty benign. In these circumstances though, what would probably kill you is the sudden drop from light speed. It would prove immediately fatal to the entire crew when inertia comes around to say hello. So the ships. Mass Effect has a huge variety of ships to talk about, so let's just dive into it. Military ship classifications are similar to modern ship classifications. Navy ships are classed as frigates, cruisers, destroyers, and carriers. In Mass Effect, military ships are classed as frigates, cruisers, dreadnoughts, and carriers. Smaller vessels are classed as fighters and interceptors. Frigates are generally used as scouting and escort ships. They're used heavily for reconnaissance as well. Given their size, frigates are able to achieve near light cruising speeds. They have thrusters that are larger for their ship size relative to the size of dreadnoughts, cruisers, and carriers. This allows them to fly in a wide berth around their larger class sisters, keeping a vigilant eye out for attackers. Traditional telescopes are useless for detecting attacks from enemy ships preemptively, given that a ship that is one light year away will arrive and start attacking long before the light that would have given them away. So these networks of frigates around larger, slower ships is paramount to success in a fleet battle. Frigates are also very useful in fleet combat. When engaging, frigates form a wolf pack formation, flying around the space where the battle is taking place and taking out ships whose kinetic barriers have been knocked down by the main guns of larger ships. Cruisers are the standard weight combat ships that you'll find away from large naval bases. Smaller frigates lack the punch and stamina to stand up alone 
alone in real combat, and the Dreadnought-class ships are a strategic resource only deployed in the most critical of battles. Dreadnoughts are massive ships designed to carry the most firepower in the fleet by far. They usually vary in length from 800 meters to 1 kilometer. Their main battery is almost the length of the main deck. These ships can put out firepower using their mass accelerator weapons that put the bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki to shame. The weapons use mass effect fields to accelerate 20 kilogram slugs to near light speed. These ultra heavy near light speed slugs can cause absolute devastation when they collide with a planet or another ship. Human dreadnoughts are named for mountains back on Earth and come in two flavors, the Everest class and the Kilimanjaro class. Due to the Treaty of Fraxian, species are only permitted to build a certain number of dreadnoughts to support their fleets. These numbers are different among the different council species. The number of species allowed to build is also tiered. The Turians are at the top as they maintain the Citadel fleet. Salarians and Asari are in the second tier and all council associate species are allowed even fewer. The ratio is 5 for the Turian fleet, three for the Salarian and Asari fleet, and one for all council associate species. Meaning that if the Turians had 10 dreadnoughts, humanity would only be allowed to build two dreadnoughts. Carriers match dreadnoughts in size, but not in function. These massive ships carry massive fleets of fighters to provide support to the frigates and cruisers in fleet combat. When in combat, fighters can be retrieved and refueled and repaired, but typically carriers seal the ship deck during combat as the deck is basically a giant corridor through the hull of the ship leading straight to the heart. If left open during combat, it would only take one well-placed torpedo shot to gut the carrier. Sounds familiar. So that's it for ship classes and basic functionality. Next time I dive into lore, I'll talk about notable ships in the Mass Effect universe and tell you about some of my favorites, like the Destiny Ascension, which I might add is a ridiculously cool name for a ship. Thanks for tuning in this week, y'all. I'll probably be on Mass Effect lore videos for a while while I try to sort out my Andromeda videos. If you have any requests for Mass Effect lore you'd like to know more about, please feel free to let me know in the comments down below. And if you'd like me to do a lore video on another game, head downstairs and leave a request. If it's something that I'm interested in or that I already know a lot about, I'll break it down for you in one of my future videos. If you like the video and want to support my channel, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to me. If you don't want to miss out on any of my future content, hit that notifications bell so you're always notified when I upload. I should go.